Let's look at what the first and second derivatives tell you about the shape of the graph of a function. The main things are they tell you where the function's increasing or decreasing and also what's called the concavity. So let's look at, we'll do look at this purely graphically here and then we'll talk about how to do this with algebra, lots of sign charts involved. If we have a graph of y equals f of x, then let's look at uh, let's an example, something like this. Something like that. And we want to think about what the first or second derivative might tell us here. Well, the thing we already know from looking at max min is that we know that these points are interesting. Those are relative maxima and minima. These, if we have a finite interval and we have endpoints, we know those might be interesting in terms of checking absolute max but they're not really that interesting as points on the curve. And so that's, we're gonna, gonna go away from that focus. Um, if we look at these low relative maximum and minima though, we know we were looking for those by finding where f prime is equal to zero. This also, even though it's not a local max or min, is also a place where the derivative is zero. And so that would show up on our list even though once we look at it, it can't possibly be either a local max or a local min of the function. So these, remember, are all called the critical numbers. And they also include pl places where the derivative doesn't exist, although I didn't put anything on this particular graph. Now, what about in between? What's going on in between? Well, in this region, let, let me draw the x values here. Those are the critical numbers, these x values. Right in here, the first derivative is positive because the slope is positive, and that's where the function is increasing. And that's the, one of the simplest links here. When f is increasing, the first derivative is positive. We pretty much already knew that. When f prime is negative, f is decreasing. And it's negative in here as well. And over here, f prime is positive, And the function goes back to increasing. OK, so that's good to know. Increasing, decreasing, increasing, because the derivative is going to be plus, negative, and, and then plus. What about the second derivative? It's a little bit harder to look at, but remember what that is. It's the slope of the slope, or the rate of change of the rate of change. Well, it's best to look at it as the rate of change of the slope, or that's one good way to start looking at it. It's the rate of change of the slope of this graph. So what does that really directly measure? Well, let's look in here. The slope starts out being positive, then gets less positive, zero, and then search turns to negative in this region. So if I have a quantity that's becoming, it starts out positive and becomes negative, as indicated here, oh, we could put the zeros in here, goes from positive to zero to negative, that means that in this entire region here, all around this hump, we're gonna have negative, okay? So this, let's make a sign chart for this guy. Looks like it's starting negative and continues to be negative in here. So what, do we, what we see is that if you have a, graph where the slope is going from positive to negative, or in general just going from big to small, is going to be curving down, or the official terminology is concave down. The concave side of this curve is downward. Okay, So concave you can just think of almost as a synonym for curving. Curving downward. Now, wait a minute, what about in here? In here, the slope is a pretty big negative number and then moderates and goes back to zero. Going from negative to zero, the rate of change of that slope, it's got to be positive in here. So right in between, unless something weird happens, and it doesn't look like there's any point where we have a DNE or anything, it's probably going to be 0. And then right in here, that's concave up. Pretty small region of concave up. It's right in just this region where it's curving upward. Because then it starts curving downward again. Right in here, it goes from 0 to negative. So the second derivative is negative. Ne decreasing slope, and then again it changes. It's pretty negative here, it's decently sloping down, and then starts going to zero. So this the slope has become as negative as it's ever going to get, so the rate of change switches to positive. And there's going to be a zero in here, so it's right in here. So these are new points that we haven't really focused on before. These are called inflection points. Let me see, I might be off. Yeah, I'm off the these are called inflection points. Very important, they are not just zeros of the second derivative. 
they are changes in concavity. They are x values where we change concavity. That's not quite fitting. Okay. And so it's either minus to plus or, pl or uh, sorry, yeah, or plus to minus. One thing I didn't put in here is what happens right here. Hey, that was plus to minus as well. I forgot to put the zero in here. So this is also an inflection point. Bunch of inflection points going on right in here. Curving downward, curving upward, curving downward, curving upward. And then finally, looks like it's curving upward from the rest for the rest of it. Okay. So to review, f prime, when it's positive, functions increasing. When it's negative, functions decreasing. When it's zero, that's a stationary point. And we're going to want to analyze those a little bit further, but we won't do that quite yet. Maybe another video. That's, that's really something we've already known for a long time. It's the second derivative that's newer to us, and this kind of terminology of concavity is very new. But when the second derivative is negative, the thing is concave down. Notice that it doesn't have to actually have, it doesn't actually have to go through zero to be concave down. Like this region, this function alone, this part, that's concave down. Even though it's going upward, it's curving downward, even though it never ends up going downward in that region. And then concave up, is when the second derivative is positive. That's curving upward, regardless of whether it's going down. It can be going down and curving upward, or going up and curving upward. They're independent. And then the places where the concavity changes, where the second derivative changes from minus to plus or plus to minus, those are going to be inflection points. The most interesting point here, I think, is this guy, because it's a zero for the first derivative. It's a critical number. It's a stationary point. And it's also an inflection point. And those are going to be uh, important things to look out for when we look at what's called the first and second derivative tests. But that's a good place to stop for now.